right hello everybody happy friday hope everybody is really really well hope everyone is having an amazing week on the retreat i know i'm having so much fun and i am so grateful for everyone's time everyone's energy and everyone's amazing messages thank you so much um i would love to hear what your biggest takeaway is just pop me a message uh, on Facebook. I really, really, uh, like, honestly, it's so nice to know. I've just had such amazing feedback. People are like, oh, this is one of the best trainings I've ever attended. I've got some clarity. And it is my absolute pleasure to help you all. It really is. So yeah, let me know what's been your favorite part so far. But there's more great stuff coming. So I've been looking forward to today. Today is Rise Up. Today it's about creating something new and having more than one way that people can work with you. Because for me, this is the best way forward. It is all about making life easy for yourself. I am a big believer in making life easy. I really am. So let's find out how everyone's feeling. How is everybody doing? I would love to know how your evenings are panning out now. Who has been good and is still staying off their phone? Is it good? That's the wrong, totally the wrong word to use. Who is consciously trying to fall asleep with positivity? So who's staying off their phone for the last hour of the day? And it's hard, like this is a habit that I bet you've had for yonks. We're so used to, look, I've got my favorite next to me, it, staring at it all the time. It's really, it's quite a hard one to break for sure. So who, yeah, who's doing the work? Who's doing that? And who's falling asleep with this amazing mental picture of what you're trying to create? And I've just loved hearing what everybody's got planned. You know, so many people want to have a facility, a farm, a rehab center, you know, somewhere where horses can come to them and they can offer like the next level care. And oh, what an amazing way to have that mental image just as you drift off. So absolutely fantastic. Yeah, I'd love to, love to hear who is doing it. Vicky, well done, staying off the phone. And like I said, like you can feel like you're doing amazing customer service because you can be like, oh, gotta be, gotta be on all the time. I've gotta be reacting. I've gotta be responding to people all the time, all the time. And Whilst that, as the as the customer, may may feel like a good thing, it's not the best thing for you. And if you are going to keep showing up, your best at energy with all of your passion, all of your skills, come and treat horses, then you need to be really, really looking after yourself. Like you really, really do, because it's just not going to keep keep it up, keep it going. I'm just going to let some people into the meeting room. Um, still on the phone yeah just just got to keep keep at it 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 is it's really hard Mary because it's a habit you know and this is what I was saying the other day about how we get so accustomed to just doing everything the same it's just like re reoccurring groundhog day for the same of us you wake up in the same place you think the same thoughts you feel the same things you have the same behaviors get in the same car go the same way <laughs> It's, it's all just the same all the time. So it's just really, really important that we are consciously thinking what we need to do to make sure that we are changing our behaviors. Okay, so we've got some staying off the phones, which is fantastic and well done, because as I said, it's not, it's not that easy to, to, to start, but you know, good for you guys for, for doing it. Uh, and like I said, just drop me a message with what your best takeaways been, because I really, really would absolutely love to hear. So today it is going to be some new ideas. What else can we have in your business? Like I said, it's all about making life as easy as possible. I'm a big believer in that. So, oh, other question actually, who else? got on the phone to a vet. So I'm telling you not to be on the phone, but yesterday in the training, we were talking about reaching out. So who actually took some action? That's what I wanted to ask you, I forgot that. Yes, a quickly have a me, amazing. Do I pronounce her name Lucille? That's how I'm saying it in my head, but I don't know if I'm saying it right or wrong. But I, 
if I'm saying it wrong, I'm so, 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 oh yes, I got it right. He's still amazing. That's how I had in my head. But when we speak on the phone, I'm going to do it. I managed to ask if I got it right. Yes, fantastic. And uh, how was the outcome? Who else reached out? Got a meeting with events next week. Excellent. Meanwhile, Steph, who else can you get in touch with? You should have three people, specific people, not just the any riding instructor in my area, the down the road vets practice. And you should know who you want to talk to. Get on the phone drop them an email, you know, get really specific for the right person. And yeah, like I said, take some action on that because it's not going to happen otherwise. Um, oh, Mary, I have your comment cut off. You're on your phone because you're using meditation. That's fine. That's no problem at all. Do you know, I was thinking about the other day, actually, I like, I want my phone to like listen to guided meditation stuff, but, but I don't want it. I think I need to get, um, a phone that literally just has like the guided meditations and stuff I want on it and nothing else on it. So amazing. Well done to all the action takers because, you know, yesterday I was covering a lot because working with others is so key to your business. Vets is, you know, the one that springs to mind for so many people, but also riding instructors, saddlers, bit fitters, um, who have I missed? Loads of people. But it's so, so important. So just make sure you are reaching out. Uh, what to also remind you, doors close to the Mastermind Sunday, evening UK time, so 8 p.m. Sunday. Doors close and the price goes up after that. Massive congratulations to Vicky and Lisa who jumped in yesterday. It's so, so delighted to have you. I think you're both on the call, but anyway, massive congratulations. The videos will be going away Sunday evening as well. So don't forget that because I know some of the sessions you're going to want to watch more than once. So just wanted to, to give you that reminder. I know, Vicky, I'm so, so excited as well. Now, what I wanted to just say is you have a choice, guys. And I know this last, well, not a year, is it? It's more than a year. It's a really long time, 15, 16 months. And I know for some of you in Australia, you're having more and more lockdowns and it just doesn't feel like it's kind of ending the whole global pandemic stuff. But what I wanted to say is whatever is going on with you and all the world, you do have a choice, even though a lot of the time it doesn't feel like it. But you do have a choice. You have a choice in how you feel. You can choose that, even though you're maybe used to feeling how the situations made you feel you can choose to feel differently and that's what the mindset stuff is about you have a choice how you feel you have a choice how you act and how you react and I think this is so so important to just get super clear on you can change everything like your future is in your hands this it, you know I've given you so many tools I can continue to give you so much more over these next three sessions, it's up to you to do something with it. Like, I feel like you're just all on this amazing brink. Some of you are gonna jump and do some great stuff. Lots, lots of you are gonna jump into the mastermind, get my spot for a year. Some of you will jump with my the ideas and go and implement amazing. And some people won't take any action. And that is really what I wanted to just say. You've got a choice, be an action taker. The, it doesn't have to be hard. You've just got to do something. So little rant over, but it's really, really important because it's easy to feel like, oh, it's all against me. But no, you can change literally everything. You have the power within you. You really, really do. So who's feeling bold and brave? Now, this is not a scary session today. It really is super practical. For, so for all those of you, the doers, you're going to love this. Okay, what I want you to do, is get your excited yeah get your workbook you might want a maths in my head is not my strong point and I'm all about staying in my zone of genius so I have my calculator phone next to me, well, phone with the calculator right next to me so you might want to have that as well what we're going to do then is I'm on the wrong page let's make sure we're all on the same page we should be on Page 17, I'm a day ahead guys, right, page 17, your annual income goal, what is it you either, if you're just new, what is it you're planning to earn, what is it you're working towards, those of you already going, stick it down in the top, on the top um, 
line, what is it you're planning to work towards, okay? Now, if you can't remember what you, when, you, when we set these big goals, you can't remember what you wrote down, go back to day one, that's the advantage of having these, these workbooks. Actually, I'm keeping up with the workbooks. Has everyone got the workbook to hand? If not, uh, Mary, would you mind just sharing it in the chat, just in case anybody needs the link, but hopefully you've all got the workbook. So jot down your annual income goal on the top line. And then what we're gonna do is we are gonna sense check your goals because something that I hear quite often is, I wanna earn this, great, I say. How many horses do you wanna treat? I don't know, or the number they give. And then when I ask how much they charge, these three things don't match up. And this is what we're going to do. We're gonna do some checking uh, to make sure it all lines up. And don't worry if there is a bit of a gap. And it's not a problem at all because this is what this is about. This is about plugging the gap today. Okay, so write down how many horses you want to treat or you can treat because it's not as simple as just being like, yeah, I'm just gonna treat you know, 10 horses a day. That's just not doable or sustainable. Be realistic, you, you, everything, you know, everyone's so different. Health, backs, traveling, commitments of children, caring your own animals, be realistic. So write down your income goal and then write down how many horses you honestly want to treat in a week and then multiply it up for a month and a year. And let's see where we are. And then we're gonna do the maths. Okay, not, not complicated maths, but got nice to keep it with simple myself. So has everybody got that filled in? How many horses you not only would like to treat, but that is doable for you to treat because it's easy to pluck an umbra and be like, yeah, I want to treat 120 horses every single month. And then go, oh, actually, no, I, only, I can only round in the afternoons um, or, or I can only work in the morning because I've got a job or something. So if you're starting out, that's a really good question. What is it that, um, so Isabel, for you, you're currently studying, aren't you? So what could you currently fit in? I think that would be the, the right place to start. If you're thinking about when you're fully qualified, then, you know, pick a number that feels doable and feels comfortable for you because you're not going to go, yes, I've got my insurance, my certificate through. Oh, boom, month one, I've got 120 courses. You know, pick a number that feels like doable. Uh, if you are, or work it around your current studying commitments. So get some numbers down. You can change them. These aren't set in stone, but let's just get something as a starting point and, and make sure that it's, it's realistic for your time commitments, not realistic about what you think you can achieve. Do you see the difference? Because I don't want people putting, oh, I just want to treat like three horses a month because that's all the horses I think I can treat because that's all I think is available rather than someone saying, no, I only want to treat four a week because I'm busy doing X, Y, and Z. So there is a big, big difference. Okay, then let's times it up. You know what you charge per session. If you have a bit of a complicated pricing structure where it's, if it's one horse, it's this price. If it's two horses, it's this price. If it's three horses and there's an R in the month, it's another price, just pick an average, okay? And then you are simply going to times how many horses you would generally see in a month by whatever you charge and put that in your revenue and the same for in your year boxes. Because what I find is sometimes it doesn't always match. Now, when you're doing it for the year, obviously we've got 12 months in the year, but we were talking about taking time off. So I suggest you are basing it on 48 weeks of the year. I think it's probably the most sensible way to do it. Um, you know, you know your commitments, you know, like maybe you've got children and they're off school, it seems for about half of the year, you know, what's doable for you? But what I'm interested in is what is this bottom box? So here where we've got revenue for the year, does this match with this? And don't worry if it doesn't, but let's just see. Tell me, tell me your numbers. Oh, I can see a spot on, excellent. Spot on with your goal, amazing, fantastic. Um, because let's just say i'm going to give you an example i worked out for you if you said twenty thousand was your income goal and you said you wanted to treat eight horses a week and you said okay i charge 50 pounds a session and you're going to do this for 48 weeks a year uh, then that doesn't actually give you twenty thousand. 
So that is giving you 19,200. Now these, these figures, this is just the starting point for you guys, okay? This is not like set in stone. The point of this exercise is to see, are you, can you treat the number of horses that you would need to, to match your goal? That's the first thing. The second thing, if you're finding there's a shortcoming, or you feel like you've got to treat like a lot of horses, or you feel like you've got to, every single week has got to be absolutely packed, then this is where we need the, the additional revenue stream. So this is the point really, is what's the gap? Is the gap massive? Is the gap small? How, you know, how comfortable, when you break the numbers down, does it feel? So like I said, if you, if you realize that you need to treat 20 horses week in, week out, that's gonna be pretty hard. Like when are you gonna take any time off? What happens if you slip down the step, your car breaks, it, it snows and it's literally, I know snow in most parts of the world isn't a problem, but for us in the UK, bit of ice, bit of snow, that stuff wiped out for a few days. We, we don't cope well with any form of, uh, of weather it seems. So just, this is, the, this is the idea. I want you to have some breathing space. So tell me, how are these numbers looking for everybody? How can you work out how much to charge when you first start practicing? As well, that's a really, really good question. I would say it really is going to depend on what you intend to include. Now, I, um, I think to an extent, you can set your price based on the value you plan to offer. Now, I'm not saying one 45 minute appointment is gonna be 500 pounds just because that's a number that you fancy, but it, I work with people who have charged between, I think 35 was the lowest, but we could see and got rid of that, to maybe 120 pounds a session. I've worked with somebody that was charging that. Um, and it really is down to feeling aligned with the price and knowing the value that you're providing and what you're putting in. Because one session with one person is going to be a different, totally different experience to another practitioner. So it really is about, is up to you to a large extent, okay? Um, sliding scales are good. I find it difficult to charge the same for a pony. Oh, this is interesting, Janice. Versus a 17 hand horses, they take longer. Now that is an interesting point. I think I would be interested to know do you do you treat that many ponies? Do you treat that many horses? Do the pony people go, oh god, this is really expensive. Like, why are we paying the same? Does anyone notice that? Because yes, obviously there's more of a horse compared to a small pony. Um, but I'm thinking in terms like, does it take that much longer? I'm thinking in terms of getting there, getting started, the admin side of it, your energy to an extent is probably similar. I'm sure a pony is a bit, takes a little bit less out of you, but that's a really interesting question. I just think you should make your pricing as simple as possible for clients. Because when I look on websites and it's like, oh, well, it's this price, or it's this price, it's this price. I'm so confused. And I want to feel like I've got a good deal. And if I know it's better for you guys to go somewhere and treat more horses, um, but I don't always know if it's great when you've only got one horse or you can't organize anyone else, you feel like you're not getting necessarily the best deal. So I think there's a, there's a better way of putting it around. Um, how can I have the conversation with customers about changing prices, so price increasing? That is a great question. I'm gonna come back to that, Meg. If I haven't answered it, can you remind me? Because I want to, just want to get us on through the work a little bit. It's a brilliant question and I will come back to that. And you can slightly want to, doesn't matter doesn't matter it doesn't the whole this is the this is the point like if, if it does it's a good thing because you've got even more incentive Olivia to get an additional income stream running and oh my goodness when you do it with a baby in one hand it really does incentivize you I um I was pregnant like literally three days overdue when I launched my first online course I remember looking down at the bump okay stay put mama's got a bit more work to do and that was a cool feeling knowing that people were starting this course and, and I was just lounging around with a tiny baby. It was a really nice feeling. So I think it's a, a really important one. Numbers match up during the season, but during the summer things shut down. Yes, definitely. This is what I want to stop for everybody, this feast and famine business. 
Um, yeah, I can imagine that it is hard going, Janice, on a bigger horse. But as I said, are, if the bulk of your clients are ponies and they're paying a horse price, I can see there might be a bit of discrepancy. But I don't know, do the pony people even notice my just want to offer? Is it your issue or is it an issue that your clients have? Because I have a feeling, Janice, it might be something that you're concerned about and no one else is. Just want to just want to, to put out there. OK, so income what need, additional income what what is the what's the gap what needs to come from an additional income stream so just write down whatever the gap you had is and then just work it out monthly um, and yearly that'd be really interesting to see or if you've got like a goal you want from an additional income stream stick it there okay i've said this before i'm gonna say again having more than one way that people can pay you money makes your life so much easier it means more money overall, which is a good thing, by the way. And anyone that's like feeling like, oh, she's all about money. Or, oh, I feel a bit bad. Oh, I feel, oh, I feel so guilty charging. I just love that. I'll do it for free. I love this job. More money means you can do more good. I said this earlier in the week, I think. I have a punchy goal, financial goal for this year. And I have a check already written out for Red Wings. And there's another charity I have in mind. When I hit my goals, it means I'm helping more people, I'm having a bigger impact, and I can do more with the money. So see it that way round, just in case anyone's a bit like, oh, the money, money mindset work is invaluable. Having more than one way to work with people, you can help more horses overall, particularly if you have something digital, and it just means you have such a bigger impact, like the literally the sky is your limit takes the pressure off like Olivia would be a great example time you know time pressured baby in one hand and so much you can do takes the pressure off uh it just yeah makes it makes it easier for you to take a bit of a break whether that's by choice or in force who was I talking Sarah I was talking to the other day with a, a bro broken wrist broken hand yeah injured and it's future proofing you I think if we've learned anything from the last year it is that having an extra income stream, a plan B, is really, really essential. Now, I talk all the time about this one horse model, and for those of you who are talking about, what that means is when you're in the car, oh, hello, one horse, do something to that horse. For me, I was being a riding instructor, for you guys it's treating, in the car, another horse, that's what I mean by the one horse model. Like, you can go so far with that, you can have a great time with that, but, there is a limit. There's a limit on how much you can do. There really, really is. Now, the easiest way, I'm all about easy, to grow your business is to get people to pay you in more than one way. So your current clients, what else could you do for them? So that is the first thing to think about. Jess, um, one of my lovely clients, you're going to hear from her tomorrow. She's doing this really, really well. So she uh, does some teaching. She's a physio, she does some groundwork. And that means that she's got more clients coming in, which is fab, but her current clients, her existing pool of clients, they have more options so they can work with her in multiple ways. So rather than just having one set of clients, one treatment, and then thinking, all right, I've got to have a new thing, a whole new load of clients. First of all, think, what else could you offer existing clients, okay? because let's make it as simple as we can to start with. So it doesn't have to be complicated. When you say additional income stream, people are like, oh my God, I've got to like create a massive course. I've got to design an app. Like these are all fab things to do. It doesn't have to be that complicated. That can be further down the line. Let's get you started in today's session. So as I said, it could be as simple as just another way to help your current clients. So we're on page 18 now three skills, qualifications, interests that you feel passionate about and you're good at, what could you do, like what can you do that could be useful for some of your clients? So groundwork is one example, poll work, creating rehab programs, designing work programs, teaching maybe, writing for people if that's something you enjoy doing, uh, making them a fitness plan, perhaps you are really hands-on with like clipping, Grooming, plaiting, show prep, maybe that's your kind of thing. Perhaps you don't just treat horses and you've got the dogs and the humans and all as well. 
only you know the answers and get sharing them. I can't wait to find out because you have more than one skill. I can tell you that now. And anyone that's like, oh, oh I don't know, I don't know, you do. Look back to um, day two and three if you need a bit more inspiration, but you do, you, you really do. So get, get cracking in, that bo in those boxes and let's see where we are with that. Let me just read the chat. Um, amazing, Hayley, you're like in a nice place towards your goal, that's fantastic. Um, so having something else, it doesn't have to be massive, doesn't need to take up all your time, but it's just like a buffer. It's like a safety net. And, you know, if you have a week where it's 15 horses, it doesn't matter because you've got something else. And this is what I want. Fantastic. Oh, that's really funny, Mary and Hayley. Your numbers are really, really similar. I like that. Forgot your time off. Don't forget your time off, Mary, for sure. Um, and then the holidays. Good, Crystal, that's really great that it, it seems to balance really well. But what else could you offer? Because it can just be more income. So come on, come on, guys. Wake up. What are your three skills? Skills, qualifications, training, interest areas, experience areas. What else could you help people with? Now, I've spoken to lots of you and it's, oh my goodness, what a wealth of talent we have in this group. Um, I was talking to Yvette, who will now be watching this on the replay. Hashtag replay if you're enjoying this later at your leisure. Thank you so much for watching back. Uh, bit fitter, massage and training in some saddle fitting as well. Vicky can treat cats and dogs. Fantastic. Oh, microchipping. Oh, that was an interesting one. I like that. That's a really useful add-on. Uh, I don't know how that works out financially, but that's a nifty one to have in there. Right, has everybody got something in these three boxes? How are we getting on? Teaching, fantastic. What else? So you've got teaching. Can Do you also like riding, Lisa? Because that could be another thing that you could do. Uh, are you good at teaching people from the ground? Like good at either doing groundwork for their horse or teaching them how to do groundwork? Because I think there is very few owners who really are skilled at long reining and lunging horses. And it truly is a skill. It really, really is. Um, so it would be really interesting to see who enjoys doing that themselves. And because you can offer to do it for people for money, be paid to do that. Um, and you can offer to teach people to do that if that's within your insurance skills and interests, of course. Qualification as an assessor. Oh, that's really cool. Well, what could you do with that, Olivia? You could be doing some webinars or something like that. Like it. Um, mm -mm. Additionally, doing coaching, pony club stages. Yeah, fantastic. There's so, so much. Yes, lots of groundwork experience. So if you've got, okay, let's move on to the next bit. Packaging it up. You've got groundwork experience. You're good at it. You like doing it. One of the things you could do is you could offer to teach people how to do that just as part of having a healthy, happy horse. You could also offer people, and this would work really well for you, Lisa, actually, a weekly slot. Now, as a riding instructor, the vast majority of people have a weekly lesson. And I know that that is certainly what I would choose to have myself, but that is what many, many clients do. They have a weekly session. Some may do it every other week, when there's to factor in competitions and so forth. But for most people, it's a pretty regular training commitment. So I don't see any difference why you guys can't be visiting twice a month, three times a month and offering different skills. So Lisa, take you as an example. You could go to the same client, let's just say weekly for, for ease, or let's just say three times a month, just allowing for time off and competitions and stuff. One time you treat the horse, one time you teach the rider, the other time you, well, you can choose, can't you? You could do some groundwork, you could ride the horse, you could teach the owner some groundwork, or maybe the horse would benefit uh, sometimes from an additional treatment. Like a pick and mix approach, I think would be really, really nice for, for you, Lisa. I think that'd be perfect. And I think that, that would work with, with quite a few of you as well. And as an owner, I would love that. I think I, that would be really good. So that was one way you could package things up. You could be offering like a done for you rehab service. So someone's horse 
they want to keep it at home, they need some help with the rehab, like maybe they are really struggling with the groundwork side of it, bring the horse back into strength, you could be offering to go and do that for them. You could be running a clinic. Clinics are really popular, particularly when you know who your niche is and you've all been on day three, you should do that. You could be offering to help them get ready for shows or post-competition. You know, if the clipping and the plaiting and the grooming side is of interest and remit to you, um, Sinead, who you're going to hear from in this call, that's something that um, Sinead was offering. I think you still are, Sinead, where she would get the horse a massage before the show. I think they had one afterwards. I think that was one of your packages. And she would get the horse ready. Now, from a busy owner-rider perspective, wow, that'd be amazing. <clears throat> Knowing my horse feels a million dollars and looks a million dollars, I didn't have to do it myself. That is a massive win. Maybe it's fitness, competition prep stuff, but so much you can do. So how are you getting on? with these boxes, taping cords to, amazing. All these things, get them all down. Even if you don't have it exactly mapped out yet, let's get these ideas down while they're fresh in your head. Really, really important. <clears throat> right, how are we doing? How are the ideas coming? Come on, put a, put a one in the chat if you've got something down as an idea. You feel like you've got something you can package up, you've got some skills down. Yes, excellent. Amazing guys, thanks so much for putting the work in. I love it. Okay, three levels works best. Think of a wine list or a, a beauty treatment list if that's in your uh, something you like doing. You've always got a cheaper option, you've got the mid, and then you've got the most expensive, the luxury, the deluxe, however you word it. And psychologically, we'll probably assess the first one thing. Oh, I'll probably, I'll probably go for more than that. We might jump to the most expensive one and think, oh, I don't know. And we probably pick the middle. Most people pick the middle. The middle feels like a sort of safe bet. You feel like you, you're not being a tight arse. You feel like you've upgraded yourself, but you haven't gone mad. And most of us are comfortable in the middle. So I think you should have three options. You should have something that is either low cost or free so that people are just like, yeah, I'll just spend a tenner or yeah, that webinar looks good, 20 quid, I'll join that. Now, it, it doesn't, it's not like a, you know, you haven't got to remortgage your house, not a massive commitment. You're just going to be like, yeah, yeah, I'll give that a go. So something low cost, your mid range is going to be your main offering. So for most of you, that is you in person treating the horse. What about your top offer? Like a package? Lisa, I hope you don't mind, I'm gonna use you again as an example. For you, your package could be, it's a three three times a month. You're like, you've, you've got that Tuesday 10 o'clock spot kind of thing booked out, and it's that combination of, of whatever, you know, your skills were you wanted to offer, so the groundwork, the riding, the training, and the, and the massage work. Um, and you've got that top offer, that VIP slot, uh, and because people, some people will want that. Nobody can pay you 500 pounds, 2,000 pounds, whatever it is, if it doesn't exist. If it's not on your website, if it's not on your radar, if you don't tell anybody that that is an option, nobody could say, oh yes, please, that would be perfect. And I've said this before, I'm gonna say it again. It is not down to you to decide what people will and won't go for, what they can and they can't afford. Some people, yes, money is how they make options and choices. Not everybody at all. Many, many people will dismiss something if they think it's too cheap. You've heard the term of things being reassuringly expensive. Hello, John Lewis, that's a, a big brand here in the UK. It's, it's not luxury necessarily, but it's like high-end, good quality. You kind of feel like you're getting good service and you know where you are and it's not necessarily the cheapest option but you don't really mind paying for it um, so it's really important to have have a top offer but don't don't dismiss it because you have money mindset issues yourself like I said for me I'm busy if I knew that I had the same person coming week after week I just knew that Wednesdays was taken care of if I didn't have time to ride the horse I wouldn't be too troubled 
because I'd be like, oh no, the horse either gets treated or they ride or they school or I get a lesson. To, to me, that's like taking the pressure off. That's like, oh great, I don't have to worry about that day. Fantastic, it's sorted. So as I said, don't dismiss because you don't think people pay for it. You can't decide that at all. It's your job to stack the value, get excited about it and tell people about it. It really is. So that, that sort of top offer, as I said, it could be those weekly sessions, something that requires more hand-holding, like more coaching, more support, more access to you, something that feels like sort of special, VIP type of stuff. Like who, who likes going to like shows, um, like the county shows, and who likes getting the nicer seats? Like I love, I miss it this year, but I love going to Windsor show. I also love going to Badminton. Badminton's not far, too far from me. And maybe it's as I've got older, I want to know I can sit down. I'm happy to pay for the members tickets because I know I get a seat. Uh, and VIP stuff is what some people always gravitate to. So if you don't offer it, nobody can pay for it. It's as simple as that. So everyone got something in that box. I'm loving the chat. I've, you know, everyone's got, I've got more stuff coming. MOT sessions. Yeah, does it need to be twice yearly? Why can it not be quarterly? Like quarterly, some people would really like that, I'm sure. Twice a year, a lot can happen in a year. I think it could potentially be even more frequently than that. So out of all the ideas that we've got on page 18, anyone's got a favorite? What are you, what are you most drawn to? What is going in the top of page 19? What is your big idea? Like I said, it doesn't need to be complicated. I'm not saying you've got to go on a new course. You've got to retrain to do anything complicated. It can simply be a clinic, a workshop, a, a webinar. It doesn't need to be complicated to start with. Make it simple. Make it with just outside your comfort zone, fractionally, a little baby step outside your comfort zone so that you actually do it. But make it so that people can pay you money in more than one way. So what have we got written down? Tell me, tell me, tell me. I can't wait to hear so many ideas. Got some great ideas. Oh, guys, I'm so pleased. This is fantastic. Loving the chat. Amazing. So, yeah, here's everyone's big idea coming along. Like I said, it's using what you've already got. You've already got all these skills. You've already got this knowledge. You've got this talent. Stick it in. Six month package with muscle education. Yes, I love it. Transformation. Hayley, I love it. Perfect. So, so true. So many people want results. And actually, these are our next boxes. So come on, tell me, have you got something in this top box? Do you have an idea jotted down? Amazing. Oh, yes. Now the chat's, now the chat's getting chatty. Uh, what have we got? Oh, okay. Local source free online courses. Yep. Uh, boarding. Yeah, yeah, like that. Okay, and so that's your main offering. So you've got a rehab place. I like it. I love it. Top option, retraining with in-person training. Yeah, so your top offer, would people, would people be, is that for people that are based quite near you? Or is that for people that would send their horse away for six to nine months? If it's the second option, well, not everybody's like me, um, but I feel like I'm going to miss my horse. Think about what you could do to involve the owner in that top package because the thought of having the horse um, happy, sound, comfortable, retrained, feeling amazing sounds great. I just love to know how I could be involved. Um, loyalty card, you can do as well. I just think that actually you're better to have more value added in for loyal people rather than just discounting. I just don't always think discounting is the best option. Think about courses for a while, so podcast idea. Um, podcast is an amazing idea. Yeah, it's not going to be an instant revenue, but it would really, really help you when you are planning a digital offering because you can get a podcast out everywhere. Then if you have something that is digital that anybody anywhere can be buying Mary that works really well incorporating training to lessons with sports massage yes I really like that um low cost option you want it to be like it's 10 to 20 quid you know like 
it's an ebook it's uh it's a webinar it's like a short webinar you know it doesn't need to be i think it needs to be a difference between that and your main offering a week stage your top package fantastic recording uh, with the owner yeah really good i just think about that is a question and owners would ask you know like do they get whatsapp access to you like do you send them videos of the horse not all of them will want it but you're going to get some soft touches like me that would love that um loving everyone's ideas but i'm stuck okay olivia go back to days two and three like what are you good at what are your skills what do you love a webinar like if you've got lecturing skills a, a webinar is the perfect option and you know i think i even said how i did do a facebook live whilst breastfeeding one of my babies um because i just need i just couldn't do both i had to do both at the same time so you can do stuff with small children around just uh, just get angle the computer right or plan it around nap time or do in the evening when you can get someone to hold the baby that's perfectly possible clinic workshop um yep rehab yes like that depends on the owner is but remote yep um yeah oh good i love that make sure that's clear because honestly and i thought about sending my horse i went and visited it was miles away i really wanted him to be there from the rehab point of view i cried actually at the thought of leaving unless i brought him home again um because i was just a real soft touch so make sure that's really really clear to people because people may not ask that um and decide that that's not an option and then not do it so cover all bases for sure okay let's crack on with the next bits because i've got some cool guests to introduce you to so i've got some more to do what problems is this solving okay now you've got some fab ideas everybody what what problem is it solving so olivia let's borrow you for a second now i give me type into the chat like what some of your ideas were um and your interests and your sort of superpowers and let's think how we could give you a webinar but what problems a webinar solve well you don't have to get off your bottom but you can learn stuff that is the simple gist of a webinar is it's teaching you something you didn't already know potentially how you set it up is up to you but you may be able to watch the replay it's convenient it's low cost it's easy and you can access people world worldwide so that would be the problem that a webinar would solve what transformations does it offer now this is a you know a big question it's going to differ you know and having a horse for nine months is obviously going to be a different transformation from watching an hour's webinar but what do, what is the outcome what is it that you can do as a result of having your service that you couldn't do before so just jot that down what can the client now do as a result so for the people that were saying they wanted to do like teaching and having the horse uh, and teaching and treatment that's what i'm looking for so much that can offer so it means that for me as a rider i've got probably a better understanding of my horse the pressure's off me the horse is more comfortable i'm going to make much better progress and i haven't got like a conflict between the riding instructor saying oh yes kick on and the person treating the horse getting always oh, gets sore here like it's the same person um so that would that would be that would be fantastic so get get cracking with those boxes um yeah what other things can your clients maybe do yeah i think better results for some for some of the offerings that you've mentioned so far faster progress um making life easier for your owners like you want a better world for horses and why not make an easier life for horse owners whilst you're at it okay what else have we got um help transform the rider to yes mary remember your strap line mary is horses moving better humans moving better moving better all together i think we had a better word than that but that's that's it roughly improve horses behavior mindset and attitude to work improve skill of riding and attitude of right yeah i really like that hey that's great time yes definitely don't need to yeah it's all done for them so go beyond time and because actually you you could be changing the outcome for someone's life and their horse drastically stress is relieved they they know it's going to be done properly as well i think it's so 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 important um how can you make a clinic 
sound much better than me going to see someone and their horse and them traveling said refreshment Steph would be your first answer make it something like think where they could go that seems like enticing or exciting like what's a nice facility that you could maybe access and use is there something else that they could do there I mean massively going to depend on where you're thinking of, of running a clinic for example is there somewhere where they could with an arena could you watch the horse being ridden under saddle as part of your clinic and then treat them because for me taking the horse and not getting on doesn't really feel that exciting taking the horse having a little jolly having a little ride somewhere else you watching the horse that that feels like it's a bit more of my worth my time and effort um, and honestly when you throw in cake tea coffee you horsey people are always starving it is never fails to amaze me the power of some nice cookies and like a tea urn or or a kettle or whatever you want to do it, it really does so there's definitely ways just think about the value think what else you can offer them that makes it seem more appealing and also I think it's down to down to your niche as well do you think they'd want a talk at the end I think you could do it stuff you know like if you're doing one person at a time that's very different um people like things interactive people like to learn but they don't want to be sort of talked at I think if you just have it um what if you're going to do a talk like make it really snappy title so it's maybe things like I don't know um five quick ways to retrain a racehorse I know it's not necessarily a quick way but you know what I mean or it's five easy mistakes to make or it's five things not to forget or something that is like grabby rather than you feel like going to sit there for an hour's lecture um, but yeah so much you can do right guys oh, so excited to give you some more fresh inspiration so what I want to do now is invite everyone to stay on the call if you'd like to hear from the amazing Sinead and Kat who are going to be chatting to you now they have both fantastic examples of taking a business from not quite where they wanted it to be and catapulting forward Sinead's got lots of different fab offerings which have been great for her and Kat has an amazing high ticket offer I'll also be walking you through some more components of the mastermind as well Anybody that wants to chat about the mastermind, Mary, if you could share a link for the consult calls, I have opened up some more spaces. I know if I was saying, I couldn't find the space I could do. So there's some more spaces on there. So, so if you want a space, get that, get that sheet in the chat and dive into that. As I said, if you don't want to hear from these guys, you don't want to hear about the mastermind, feel free to jump off. Tomorrow, we'll be taking these ideas and to, I'll be teaching you how you can stop bring it to life, how you can design a launch plan for that. So where is Sinead? Sinead, I saw you and I feel like I've lost you. Do you want to unmute yourself? Let's Hello. Oh, she is. Now, how do I what's I trying to do? Oh, that was it. Add a spotlight as well. Sinead, it's really lovely to see you. Thank you so much for joining us. Now, we've gone from no clients or few clients to no websites yeah really busy in a really short space of time and let's yeah let's give these guys some inspiration because they've been cracking on this week and it'd be lovely to hear how you felt about working together i know you're a bit like ah the beginning it seemed quite terrifying but yeah let's let's hear it all from you shanae can't wait so I had clients and it was okay, but I spent more time riding racehorses and hunters than I did actually massaging. And I decided through first lockdown that I didn't want to be where I was anymore. Did a complete move, moved three hours away from home and started up fresh with the help of friends and um, people that I already knew up in Norfolk. And I'm so busy now like I have to book in days off and I do a bit of everything I do riding teaching groundwork lessons pole work sessions massage horses and humans um clipping plaiting literally whatever anyone wants me to but every single step I take doing something else gets my foot in the door doing another thing like I got 
I've got quite a reputation for riding naughty horses. So I got rung up to ride a pony that was naughty. And I said, well, have you ever had its back done? And they were like, no. And I was like, well, I can't, I'm not riding it. If it's never had its back done at eight years old and it's misbehaving, like there should be, there's probably something wrong with it. So now I do his back. The pony now behaves. The rider is now having lessons with me from him um, on a weekly basis. And my, I'm very much in the door just because people knew me, not just for my massage. And I think that makes a massive difference. And like there's horses that I just go and ride and then they're like, oh, can you do his back? And there was one that I rode on a show jumping yard. And now I do all the owners and horses backs on the yard. And there's so many different ways of, it's not just about promoting the massage as much as it's promoting everything and just getting your name around and people knowing what you can do more than knowing what you can't do. I love that. And that is so, so true. Now, and when we started working together, this was not all in place at all. Like, Eve reminded <laughs> me about the racehorses. You were just like, I just want to stop riding all these racehorses. And I know you felt a bit apprehensive about investing. Like, it felt like a really big step for you. I remember that yeah. really last summer. Um, so, yeah, how did you feel? And, like, how did you overcome that? And how did you feel at the end of working together? mindset is definitely a massive thing that definitely helps um and just thinking thinking positive about everything really just all walks of life um like I have lots of health issues which I have to deal with and the mindset in the program of working with you helped with that as well because I needed to see that it wasn't an issue and I could get past it and it's just yeah I think mindset is a massive thing just being confident enough in what you do and what you can do to no, prove to so other people right. I, I, I describe it as the missing link and everyone thinks when it comes to investing in their business that they should be buying a new machine or going on an extra course and actually investing in yourself and working on yourself is yeah. probably the best thing you can do for your business it really is definitely and do what you enjoy like I, I mean, there was a horse I was riding for someone and I mass I got into her by massaging her other horse and then she bought a youngster and asked me to school her and I massaged him and schooled him. And I was kind of getting to a point where I was like, I don't really know why I'm riding this horse anymore. And it was it was getting a bit boring because I, I felt like I couldn't take it any further for what she needed it to do. And it just kind of, in the end, it, we're like, we still obviously talk and I still massage her horses, but it fizzled out the riding and I'm like, I feel better for not riding it anymore because I felt like I was, I wasn't enjoying riding it like I would before because I wasn't teaching it anything anymore. And yeah. I think you've that definitely is, got to do what you enjoy. So, so true. And that confidence, you know, to say, no, actually, this isn't what I want to be doing. And, and that feeling that you don't have to say yes to everybody, I think it's one of the biggest things I've seen change in you because yeah. before you'd have been like, yeah, yeah, I'll do that. Like, I've got to have every client possible. I'll just take anything, even if they want to do it. And yeah. now, in a really nice way, you can pick and choose. You can stay in yeah. your genius and you can go, yeah, I want to do that. Actually, I'm going to pass that one on to something else. That's not really what I feel like fancy doing. And what a great position to be in. And Sinead, just like, congratulations. Like, you've achieved so much yeah. in a really a short period happened. of time. It's fantastic. Yeah. You didn't have a website. You didn't have a blog. You didn't. No, have the website emails. gets so many views all the time, and yeah. it's and the like because I use WordPress. They've got a really handy little app, and it tells you how many views you've had, what pages they've looked at, and where they looked from. So some are from Facebook or Instagram, and others are from Google searches. And to know that people are searching your name or yeah. your area for horse therapists, knowing that that's how you're coming up. Yeah, it's definitely it's really, a massive it's thing. It's so lovely to watch, Sinead. It really has. I'm so, so happy to help you. And thank you so much for joining us. And no problem at all. I, just, I think that's such an inspiring story. Moving within the second lockdown, starting totally in a new area and having all this in such a short space of time is amazing. So you felt the fear about investing, but you did it anyway. And look yeah. for you. And oh, thank you so much, Sinead. That's amazing. Thank really, you. really nice to, to join us and tell everybody about that. That's fab. Mm, um, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. So, Sinead, I've, I've been talking about mindset. I've been talking about lead gen, 
finding clients and business skills. And this is what my mastermind covers. And you can see from talking to or hearing from Sinead that you need this. You need to be other ways you can work with clients, how to attract clients into you. And you need the business stuff. You need the website. You need the email list. You, you need to be juggling these things with the belief that it will work, with the belief that you are great, with the belief that people want to work with you, just like Sinead has just shared with us. And that's what makes the difference. When I put together my mastermind, I thought about my own business journey. And I thought about how I'd gone from one course, I set up as a Facebook event, because I always thought it'd be fun, quite frankly, to having over a thousand people attend these courses in person. Then, you know, having more courses, digital courses, a conference, other revenue streams, and a whole separate size of my business. How had I gone from this one Facebook event in a relatively short space of time to all these other bits? I was thinking about, like, I get stuff done, like I'm a doer, I'm definitely an action taker. And although I'm a positive person, I definitely have a bit of a rubbishy mindset. I shared how I had such a problem with time. And I also had plenty of self-doubt and I kept getting stuck. And it's actually just like Sinead just shared, it was by working my mindset that I got unstuck. And I just didn't realize that that was the biggest issue because probably like lots of you watching, you think, I want to grow my business. I want more clients. You think that business stuff, to grow your business, you need business strategy and business ideas. And they are very important, but without the mindset, it just doesn't do it. Like you kind of can't, you can't out action a rubbish mindset. You can do all the things, but if you don't believe it'll work and you are riddled with self-doubt or you don't quite feel you're good enough, just it doesn't pull it, it doesn't pull it off, quite frankly, because that was me and, and um, it, yeah, it's really frustrating. So the mindset stuff is so, so important. It really is. And that's why the pre-study for the mastermind is money mindset and brain training for the busy. And that's why I release a new um, mindset tool every single week in the program, because you've got to see what works for you. What's worked for me, what's worked for five of my clients, uh, hasn't necessarily worked for client number six, seven, and eight. And they've had something different. That's why I've got so many tools and ideas to, to give you all in the mastermind because you have to try and there a bit but something will work so once you've got the mindset right you need a plan uh, and this is definitely Sinead did not have a plan when we started together not to be <laughs> no. <so. laughs> no, I not at all. That when I started my business <laughs> it's fine but that's what you get that when you pay for help you get a plan that's yeah. what you get um, you need to know who you help and then you need more ways to help them. Then simply you need to just fill with clients. Uh, be more visible. You've got the mindset right by this point. You've got the skills. And then you just have to get better at the things that perhaps you don't know how to do, like being on camera, doing stuff live. And then once you've got a plan for the launching, it all comes together. It really does. Like, you don't need to have thousands and thousands of followers. You know, if you've only got 100 people on your Facebook page, it doesn't matter. Get to know them. Show up live. Like, be a real person. Don't try and be invisible and try and hide behind long wordy posts. Just, just be you. Um, and that's why I love teaching my clients to, you know, to go live, to do webinars. It's a really big part of the mastermind. Uh, and it, it makes such a difference. So if you're thinking this is sounding just up your street, get a consult call booked. Mary, did we get the link in the chat? I'm not sure if I saw it. I've got some spaces this afternoon. I've added some extra spaces and a couple over the weekend. So jump into one and let's see if it's the right fit for you. Um, you know, Sinead was saying how investing feels scary. It does, totally. Like I made a big investment in my business, uh, what, in me and coaching, me and the business. I am the business. Uh, in the first lockdown, I felt really scary. Um, you know, I've spent thousands and thousands on coaching and then mastermind for myself. And it really does work. You get so, so frustrated with your progress on your own. It's slow and you'll want to give up. And the mastermind is going to give you what you need to succeed. It's the one-to-one -one support. It's new skills to learn. You can practice those new skills, there's accountability, there's tech support, like all the things that currently derail you, we've got it covered. So it really is for you, if what you're doing right now is just not working, 
and you don't know what to do because if you keep doing what you're already doing you're not getting results where are you going to be six months later you're going to be exactly the same place it's for you if you want to future proof and I think after the whole COVID thing which is obviously still going on and it's you know different in different parts of the world it's some people are still locked down you need a, you need to be future proof you need to think what else can you put out there that makes your life easier makes it easier for your clients if you know you can do more and you want a bigger impact this is for you if you're about to qualify and you're thinking where are all the clients going to be then this is for you it, it really is like the world has changed so much everything's had a shake up it really has as a result of covid you know it's been a very bad time but also there have been a few slight positives i think it has totally changed the world you can have these other income streams digital stuff is so easy to do now you don't have to struggle as much like it's so much easier to put something out there digitally than it was even three years ago it really has so you've got a choice you can decide to give yourself and your business a massive shake up or you can choose to do nothing and still be aware at christmas like the quiet weeks that yo-yo income the wonderful work the crazy busy at some points and then twiddling your thumbs at other points like it's up to you i would love to help you I know that the mastermind makes a massive difference. I know that it doesn't have, you'd have to be stuck. And I would love to help you. So if you want the help, jump into a concert call and let's find out if it's the right fit for you. I made this choice and myself, I've made some investments in my business and then in lockdown, I made a massive big investment in, in coaching. And I got the support, I made the choice. You know, I could have had all the excuses not to, but I did it and I had young children. I did the homeschooling pandemic, but I did it and I worked on myself more than ever before. And it, it made, it made a massive difference. It really, really did. So if you're feeling worried, feeling scared, been there, it's quite okay. Um, you can't get where you want to go without some help, just that you can't be training a horse. So the help is there. It's up to you if you take it, but I really, really suggest you consider the mastermind because if you're not getting where you want to be, doing the same thing is not going to get you there any faster. Now, Kat was full of fear. I'm going to say this, she won't mind about working together. And let's find Kat and she can tell you her story. Kat, where have you gone? I saw you in there a minute ago. She, I don't, I think, I think she'll mind me saying, she, I think she just slightly like, lost her like mojo in her business. Um, where is she? She was here a minute ago. Where are you, Kat? I can't hear you. Have you gone silent? I'm sure she was here a minute ago. Well, if she's not here, she can join us on another day. And I'll tell you a little bit about her story just before we finish off if I can't find her. Mary is Kat on the call because I'm sure she was there a minute ago. But if she's not, I will just tell you a little bit and she can tell you herself in the group or on, a, on another day. Kat had like lost her way a little bit in her business. Like she loves helping horses, but she, she felt like she could do, she wanted to do more than massaging, which was what she was doing at the time we started working together. And she just knew she could help horses and the owners in a, in a bigger way. And she has put together these really cool programs where people get her one-to-one -one help. It's coaching for the horse and the rider and to get them get them better connected. And that's a word we've used quite a lot this week, connected. And she recently said, this is all really, really new. So she's kind of ripped up her whole business and not started again, but really reworked it. So that it feels really aligned to her. And maybe this is within the last month or so that she's done the six weeks. She just signed her first big high ticket client. And I'm so, so excited for her. And I'm really sorry that she can't tell you about this herself because she was here a minute ago. But anyway, we've lost her temporarily. We'll get her back on tomorrow or Sunday. But yeah, she's a real inspiration. For those of you thinking, don't know if I could do the high ticket bit, you've got to speak to Kat and hear from Kat because you can. And it's so empowering for her because to hit her income goal, she needs like not that many clients. I think she's 10 of her high ticket offers to hit where she wanted to go for the year. How freeing, how liberating. So I just wanted Sinead and Kat to talk to you today to give you some inspiration because I know some of you feel really stuck and really frustrated, but it's, it's all doable. 
it's all possible. It's all about finding your purpose, knowing who you help and just upgrading everything and just being bold and taking that jump. Even if it's a small jump and it's putting a webinar out there and it's 20 pounds a go, that's, that can be all it is. Now guys, we are going back tomorrow. Um, we are going to be looking, as I said, at launching your new idea. Can't wait. Get in, onto a consult call if you haven't already and you want to know more about the program. It's only open till Sunday, 8 p.m. UK time. And I'm here meanwhile to answer your questions. Pop me a DM if you want a question answered. That's no problem at all. And don't forget the videos, if you're on the replay or want to watch these back, are only up till Sunday evening. Right, lovely to see everybody. And I will see you all tomorrow. Sinead, thank you so much for joining us again. And enjoy the sunny weather, those of you UK based. Take care, see everybody tomorrow. And I'll pop you a message. Um, Hayley, catch up over the weekend. Fantastic. Amazing. Right, I will pop those of you messages and we will take it from there. Enjoy your weekend, everybody. I'll see you all one o'clock UK time tomorrow. Take care. Bye.